There's nothing quite like the holiday season. It's the best time of the year, but also far and away one of the most hectic. Simplify what you eat with Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. My wife's a teacher, and Factor's had her covered for lunches at school. The jalapeno cheddar chicken is her favorite meal so far, while I'm quickly taken to the creamy Parmesan chicken and green pepper and beef casserole as Ole Miss football rings in the postseason and it's prime recruiting season. We haven't skipped a beat at our house because we can rely on Factor. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy. What are you waiting for? Head on over to factormills.com slash TOC50 and use our special Talk of Champions promo code TOC50 to get 50% off. That's right. Factormills.com slash TOC50 and promo code TOC50 to get 50% off. Continue to support your wellness goals while feeling your best this holiday season. Try Factor today, a proud sponsor of the Talk of Champions Podcast Network. Welcome in to a special Saturday, December 2nd. 2023 edition of the flagship. I've been Garrett at Spirit Ben on Twitter. He's Zach Barry dialing in from Chattanooga, Tennessee, I think. Hey, bud. What's up? Yeah, dreary, rainy, disgusting Chattanooga. And we've got uh, state championship games going. But uh, before the game that I'm here on assignment to uh, to cover, check out some, uh, some Ole Miss uh, targets. Uh, the Ole Miss basketball team made a huge statement. Then. Yes, that's why we came together. I was sitting in a hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. My daughter, Riley, has a gymnastics competition on Sunday, so I couldn't go to the game. I planned to on Saturday. Zach, he's covering Ole Miss recruiting targets in the Tennessee Chattanooga area, so he didn't get to see it either, but we both watched it. Of course we did. I live tweeted it at, at Spirit Ben. He's at Zach underscore Barry on Twitter. We both write for the Ole Miss Spirit, Ole Miss Spirit.com and Fleetable on three. But yes, Ole Miss, it didn't even take Chris Beard till December. 7-0 and with the biggest win yet, a win over Memphis. What's up? What do you think about that one? I listened on the way down. Uh, XM Radio, clutch as usual. Um, you know, I was talking to some people. I uh, had some Memphis fans that were texting here and there. I, 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 I stayed quiet. I didn't respond, mostly because I was driving. It was raining, but I, I was going to wait and see before I made any, you know, sweeping, you know, judgments on the game. Listening to it, Ben, it felt like it was a game, just the way the, the flow was going and how Memphis seemed to get just about every break, every loose ball. They were getting putbacks. Ole Miss got dominated on the offensive glass. I know Chris Beard will celebrate. He'll be happy, but they're going to get back in the gym and work on that for sure. Um, But, man, just a a team embodying the mentality, the mindset of its head coach, no quit. They stayed at it. They were extremely aggressive off the bounce offensively. Jalen Murray, I mean, what else can you say? I mean, he looked like he was wearing a number 42 jersey or a number 12 jersey. Just bucket yeah. after bucket. He, I thought I saw Stephen was, Moody a lot in that game, man. Especially when he, he drove was and stepped out to the elbow and made the big shot to go up by two. I think it was 77 75. They went 80 to 77. And he finished, um, did Jalen Murray, seven of 14 from the field, four of six from three, four for four from the free throw line. He had nine assists, four rebounds, and 22 points. A team leading 22 points. He's a transfer from St. Peter's and almost got him over, I think, because you and I both covered it. Richmond it was Richmond and not much else that offered him out of the, while he went into the portal. Yeah. The spiders and Ole Miss is the one yeah. reaping the benefits of it. This here's what I, here's what I felt watching this game. First of all, the pavilion was electric. It was the most dynamic. It's been one of the most dynamic atmospheres it's had since it opened in 2016. That night when it opened, it was special. The NIT against, I want to say Georgia tech. I remember that one. That was pretty special. There were some moments, but this is up there. And Chris Beard did it with a team that is still not even what it's going to be next week, let alone in a month, let alone by the time the madness rolls around in March. 
and they've gotten critical wins, the best wins over quality teams, NCAA tournament teams. NCAA tournament team was NC State last year. They're an ACC contender this year, and you waxed them by 20. Memphis at home, you fall behind seven points, keep, keep get, get going at them, staying in it, keep it in the game, and you're able to come out with the win. These are wins that were not happening for the last four years. There were a lot of close. There was, especially in the first three years under Kermit. But these wins are different, and it's because a culture is being created, and it's appropriate on Culture Week, as Chris Beard called it. A culture is being created that isn't just Ole Miss basketball being back. It's a different brand and identity. The fact that you watch this Ole Miss team fall behind 7.6 points over and over again and still felt confidence that it wasn't going to descend into chaos and a madness, a beautiful flow of basketball passing the extra pass taking in rhythm threes, not contested threes because the ball stops with you. Matthew Morrell playing within the context of an offense better than he ever has before. I have never been more optimistic. I guess since Kermit's debut debut season when they went to the NCAA tournament, but even then when you get blown out like they did against Oklahoma, you kind of start questioning everything. Now, in retrospect, this is probably a top five most excited. I've been for Ole Miss basketball and believing in what can be in the modern era, and it's his first team. That's what's remarkable about remarkable about it to me. He's gotten the two most consequential wins in years in his first seven games. Yeah, I would say it's probably the most excited I've seen a fan base, and the most excited that you've sensed the program, town, campus, everything since – uh, probably like Andy Kennedy. I think his second year almost got out to like 13 and 0, and there was a ton of buzz. Um, you know, it's probably since then, you know, it went to the NCAA tournament, like you said, you get blown out by Buddy Heald and the Sooners, so it was short lived. But I mean, it's a palpable excitement that you can feel. I mean, I could feel it through the radio, Ben, like it was loud on the radio, and I know there were a ton of Memphis fans there. You know, that, you know, just up, you know, I-55 rivalry. The Tigers, a, a storied basketball program. Penny Hardaway's done a fantastic job. They have – I think this is a really good Memphis team. They're long. They're a lot older. Penny's done a nice job of, you know, almost kind of like Kiffin in football where he's using the portal to build a roster that's older and more experienced. We've talked about that all year with what – Ole Miss did on defense with what they brought in the portal. And that's what Penny did. And, and, and I mean, this is a hell of a win for an Ole Miss team that is still finding itself. Um, Beard is still trying to build. You know, you talked about culture. He's trying to build that mentality. And you could see it in spots. You know, there were, there were parts in the game where I thought it was going to get away from Ole Miss. I thought Memphis was going to pull away um, just – with out of sheer talent and just experience, they were longer. They seemed to be a lot more aggressive with loose balls, getting after rebounds. But credit Ole Miss, they stayed in it. Jalen Murray was tremendous. Matthew Morrell, outstanding game. He had 20 points, um, was deadly from three. And then Alan Flanagan, man, just Mr. Consistency, just continues to attack off the bounce, get to the rim, challenge defenders. I thought that was big early. They got out to the big – you know, 7-0 run to start the game. Memphis comes right back and goes on a 19-2 run. Flanagan stayed aggressive. He continued to go at their guards and to attack their big men in the paint. And I think that that's what Ole Miss is going to have to do. They're going to have to just be tougher and just, you know, more resilient down the stretch in this season because, sure, it, it's it's a work in progress. They're not a complete team by any means. I know it's just December, so, you know, duh. But – I think that they're going to have to – all the cliches, been grit, you know, tenacity. It, it, the team is built around defense. You're built around that whole mindset. And I think that you can sense that this group has bought in. Now you throw in a guy like Moose and Cisse to go alongside Jamarian Sharp in the front court, and you've all of a sudden got two feared defenders, two bona fide shot blockers that can change the course of a game you can get some runouts. You got athletes like Morrell, Flanagan, Murray, Caldwell, Coward. You can get out and run. 
It's not exactly what Beard loves to do, but quick defense turn to offense, I think, is what the calling card is going to be for this team. And, hey, if they can somehow get Brandon Murray eligible, this is a dangerous, dangerous team in SEC play. Not necessarily saying they're going to win a ton, but it's definitely going to be a team that scares people like it scared Memphis today, and it came out with a gritty win. Look, both Ole Miss and Memphis are currently projected NCAA tournament teams. They came in to this game. Andy Katz of NCAA.com had Memphis as a number eight seed, I think. Had Ole Miss as an 11 play-in seed matched up in the south bracket. It's not as if Ole Miss got a huge upset here in terms of where these teams are, but when you consider that we live in this every day, Ole Miss sports, not college basketball. It's a remarkable turnaround, and it hasn't even gotten to double-digit games yet. The most consequential wins Ole Miss has had over non-conference opponents in years. And Buddy Hill didn't play for the 2018 Ole Miss team, I mean, Oklahoma team that whipped Ole Miss. But maybe that makes it worse that Ole Miss got raced so badly. Usually Ole Miss under Andy Kennedy, even when they went to the SEC tournament, they had to play their way in. They were coming from behind. They were playing from behind. Ole Miss under Andy Kennedy, under Kermit Davis, even with their greatest moments, always seem to be playing from behind. And you've now got an Ole Miss team with Chris Beard, who has instilled a different kind of culture, a complete discipline. Uh, I think his demeanor on the sidelines is impressive. He uh, lets guys play through mistakes. He constantly is engaged in every aspect of the program, be it them cheering on the sideline, on the bench, getting the fans involved, bringing the fans onto the court after the game. What you're seeing here is a paradigm shift, and only Chris Beard could have done this. You could have hired other guys, but Chris Beard is among the very best in his sport. It's the most impressive and decorated and accomplished on-paper hire Ole Miss sports has ever made in any sport. It's not close. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised, but we've seen what Ole Miss basketball has been historically. Nine um, nine NCAA tournament appearances. Chris Beard is vying to make Ole Miss the fourth program he's taken to the NCAA tournament separate program since 2016. He took Texas Tech to the 2019 title game. And yes, they were struggling early on. They were beating Detroit Mercy by one or three points. I think three of their first six games was decided against bad competition by three points or less. And you were thinking, oh, God, it's the same thing we've been watching with Kermit's teams. They can't score, or they can't do this, they can't do that. Four of their 16 players on the roster are returners. The rest are brand new, either transfers or freshmen. What they were on day one was not what they were going to be on day seven. This is a constantly evolving team. And the fact that they're 7-0 and through all of that change, through all of that massive overhaul of talent and starters. I mean, Matthew Morell's playing a completely different role now. He was the number one and sometimes only scoring option for Ole Miss last year, and now he's playing within an offense that's facilitated by a transfer point guard from Jalen Murray, who's probably the most traditional, what you want is as far as distribution, assists, and driving and kicking out. I, I would say maybe since Jarvis Summers, in terms of just doing that, playing the point yeah. guard position in that way, in a distribution it's, way. So now you're seeing all of these guys fall into roles like Matthew Morell, Jamin Brakefield. Now you got Musa Sisa. You got your two seven foot plus forwards that you can rotate in and out or play together. This is an NCAA tournament team. And the fact that it only took seven games for Ole Miss fans to, to treat it this way and to celebrate this way and to be excited this way. The SEC championship game is playing is being played right now. Usually that would be what was dominating the message boards on the Ole Miss spirit, Ole Miss spirit.com and affiliate on three or Twitter, wherever it might be where your Ole Miss community is and you're hanging out. It would be, Oh man, it, what if Ole Miss got in the playoff this way? No, we're talking about Ole Miss basketball. You and I came together on the road to talk about Ole Miss basketball. It is a culture shift. And in culture week, man, if you were trying to hit it out of the park, Chris Beard, just, I mean, Walk off grand salami. What a week and what a win for him over Memphis. You know, it, it doesn't take a uh, a genius or a basketball savant to pick up on some uh, some bad tendencies, some some things that were concerning. You know, over Thanksgiving break, I'm watching the Temple game. My four year old is sitting there, and Temple gets a couple baskets late. They get super tight, and even he, a four year old, he's like, "That's not good, Dad." 
I was like, you're right, buddy. It's not good. Uh, you know, they eke out a one-point win against Temple. You mentioned the Detroit-Mercer game that was tight. Um, the Sam Houston game was a battle. You know, it was kind of you, – you were you were looking at it as like, hey, tons of positives. You can really take some things away from these games. But you were also thinking they're not there. They're not even close to being there. Today was a, a real-life, tangible look at, you know what, they may not be that far off. Now, I'm not saying it. I don't think you're saying it. No one is sitting here saying, oh, the Ole Miss team is going to win 20-plus games. They're going to be top tier in the, in the SEC. They're going to be in the field comfortably come selection Sunday. No, but I think the buy-in is so important here. You know, uh, you're, you're talking about us talking basketball on a Saturday when you've got, you know, championship week of college football is on. Recruiting is so big right now. You've got the portal going crazy, but we're talking hoops. And talk about the buy-in of the roster for Lane Kiffin this season and how they, they – Jackson Dart, J.J. Pegues, Jared Ivey, Jordan Watkins, they've all talked about the buy-in of, of the guys that come in, even the new guys. Every like, single hey, one of those, those players you just listed was at the basketball game today as well, which was really cool to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's awesome. Um, but, but, yeah, like everybody knows their role. They're bought in. You know, they talked about it on the season with, with Cedric Johnson, and, you know, he won the Chuck DeMullins Award, and they're talking about how he leads by example, but not just – with his play, he's in the locker room. He's a he's a leader. I think that that is very similar to what Beard's doing. With you know, you said Morell's playing a completely different role. T.J. Caldwell's kind of a different role. Coward's a off the bench, energy defensive guy. Give me some energy. Get some rebounds. Get some steals. You know, on ball pressure. Everybody kind of knows their role. Sharp knows his role. Be a defender. Alter shots. Get rebounds. Cisse, same thing. Get in there. You know, be disruptive be a physical presence. And I think that if they can continue to see the progression, uh, Jalen Murray, I, I think most people thought when Ole Miss signed him out of the portal, hey, he's an older, experienced guy. He's played in March. He's played in the tournament. You know, he's going to be a floor general, you know, point guard, pass first, whatever. No, he's getting buckets. He's being aggressive, and I think they love that. Um, before I forget, Ben, I want to go back to something you said that, that I love that I've seen from Beard letting guys play through mistakes, letting games unfold, seeing how players respond. Early in the game, Memphis had that 19-2 to run I talked about. No timeouts were called by Chris Beard. No panic timeouts, no stomping, throwing a jacket. And that's not a knock on the previous regime, just different coaching styles. Beard is much more comfortable sitting back, you know, proof in the pudding type stuff. Like, hey, we prepared for this. You know, I, I heard Dan Lanning say this, where he said adversity doesn't exist if you prepare for it. And I think that's a that's a big thing for Beard and the staff. Like they they knew what Memphis was, they knew how good they were, they knew what they were up against. So there's no panic. Hey, they get a couple buckets. Who cares? Get the ball, pass it back in, let's go down and score. So I think that that's been big it, 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 for guys. You know, the returning guys. You know, Morrell, Caldwell, Breakfield, Coward. You know, they were used to a different coaching style with Kermit. A lot of timeouts, a lot of, you know, very vocal. You know, Beard is going to be vocal. He's not some super nice guy that's not going to get in your in your ass if you screw up. But he does it a different way. You know, they call a timeout, he's going to coach. He's going to go on the whiteboard. He's going to be very active. He's going to be in people's faces. But it's a very calculated way about it. And I think that that different approach has resonated with this group. And it's refreshing to see that. And, again, it's not a knock on Kermit. It's a different style. But as a, you know, casual observer of a game, I think it helps the team get into a flow better when you're just letting them get out and play instead of calling a timeout, bringing them over for 30 seconds to yell at them. Um, it was refreshing. I, I think the team with just tremendous response today in that game. Like I said, first half, there were several – sequences when Memphis was really getting after Ole Miss on the boards, got some big buckets. They stretched it to, you know, six or seven, but just Memphis just could not pull away from this Ole Miss team. And I think that speaks to the players and the coaches and how they prepared and just, hey, we, we talked about it a little bit, but give credit to the fans, man. Incredible atmosphere. Uh, it was a sellout. I, I didn't get to see what it looked like on TV as I was driving, um, but it was loud as hell on the radio, and I think 
as you transition now from football into basketball, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how this fan base responds to a basketball program that's all of a sudden relevant again. Three Rebels uh, finished with double-digit points, 22 for Jalen Murray, like we said. Matthew Morrell had 20. He was 6 of 7 from 3, really efficient from distance, and he was taking in-rhythm threes for the most part. He made a couple of contested threes, which were shades of the old Matthew Morrell, but this is a beautiful five-out motion offense, and nobody is forcing things. I mean, you saw Alan Flanagan late in game actually pass up some more wide-open mid-range to three-point shooting shots, and uh, oh, he had a wide open look yeah. at the end before Murray hit the shot. He passed yeah. it up because that's what that's what Chris Beard wants to do in an offense. He wants to work downhill and play off of it, and they did exactly that. They ran the most efficient play in their offense in the final possession to really give them the lead. And eighty to seventy seven, they finish it. What a great game, and just what a great moment for this program. Because again, when you go into the off season and you're replacing Kermit Davis after they'd won seven combined SEC games in the previous two years. There was only one real move of the program historically awful as, as as historically awful as Ole Miss. There was only move one move that Keith Carter and company could have made to inject immediate relevance and immediate credibility into this program as far as an on court basketball perspective, and that was Chris Beard. And we all knew it would take some time. I didn't think that. I mean, we're not even we're not even close to Christmas yet. We're not even to the Christmas break at school. And they've already beaten Memphis, who yeah. is a projected NCAA tournament team. They whipped NC State. And, yes, those early season squeak buys were important. But like we said back then, it was about the result and not anything else. It's just get get the win, get some minutes of these guys on the floor together. Now, now they're starting to learn roles and learn what they are. And a lot of what they are offensively now runs through Jalen Murray and his ability to facilitate. So what a great game. I mean, just an incredible Ole Miss day, and it's – um, great to see that the fans are responding and Chris Beard's building the culture. And I was talking to a number of people this week, uh, Ole Miss people, high-end Ole Miss people that know all about Ole Miss basketball, let's put it that way. And, you know, I made an off-the-cuff off, off the cuff joke, like, oh, you know, Chris Beard, he might not be long here, blah, 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 blah. And every one of them said, I don't know, man, he really loves it here. And he's pouring himself into it. And I believe him. And you watch today and you see yeah. how Ole Miss fans have responded. He is really – I mean, every – single aspect of this program from the fans showing up today to the on court product that is just so much more aesthetically pleased. That's the best Ole Miss basketball has looked as far as just playing pure good, how basketball is supposed to look. I mean, a decade, this is a different time. And like Chris Beard said, to start the year, Hey, you better get your tickets now. Cause there's going to come a time when tickets can be hard to come by. And I think that's coming pretty soon. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, whichever way you look at it, this this isn't our first rodeo with first games. We we've been up here a lot in the first seven games of the season, um, you know, I'm, and maybe that paid some dividends. Uh, uh, we've been in a lot of one possession games, a lot of last four minutes of the game. So um, you know, you, you're not going to win them all, but what you can do is not lose. And uh, you know, you either win the game or you run out of time. Um, and just trying to get these guys to understand. And today we did that. I would feel the same way if uh, the last play doesn't go our way today. I thought we competed against, in my opinion, one of the most talented teams in college basketball. We'll see if my prediction's right. I'm pretty confident about it. Memphis is good. I thought we competed. We took some punches. We threw some punches. And we give ourselves a chance to win a close game down the stretch. And that, that's what the story of our season will be, as every other team in, in the SEC. You got to learn how to win close games. And it's early. We got a long ways to go. Um, you know, we just got to validate this with the next time we play. You guys had uh, your, their best offense in the first half was coming off your turnovers. What did you guys do in the half court defensively, you think, well, especially as the game wore on to really slow them down? Yeah, tonight uh, was, was um, you know, I'm not, I'm not too happy about giving up 70-something points, but uh, our three-point defense was elite tonight. And that's a big weapon for Memphis. And Fortune always plays into this a little bit. Did they miss some open shots? Yes, they did, but so did we. But I think uh, we, we contested shots, we rotated, and we had the right guy shooting some of them on different possessions from our perspective. But um, not, not a lot of things are popping out on my head about our defense tonight until I watch the film. But I do think we had an emphasis of guarding the three-point line tonight. And I, I thought that was necessary to beat Memphis. Chris, you were down, Chris, you were down 11. Uh, about 18 minutes to go, Allen had three fouls. How critical was that 
eight, nine minute juncture where he didn't play and you guys not only stayed in it, but chipped away at the lead? Yeah, team basketball. Got a lot of confidence in all of our players. And uh, yeah, we, we put five guys out there in Ole Miss jerseys. Expectations don't change. So, um, you know, I have to go back and look at Al's fouls. Thought a couple of them were just kind of tough, aggressive plays in basketball. And I'm sure a couple of them were discipline related. Um, but it was good to see the team play in different combinations tonight, not just Al, the minutes where he wasn't playing, but also Musa. Um, you know, Musa impacted the game tonight, uh, and he's just going to keep getting better and better and better as we get him, uh, you know, in, in the full-time flow of the game. But I thought he did exactly what was expected of him tonight. He impacted the game, um, you know, in the role that he had, and he's just going to keep getting better and better and better. Back when you were – uh, recruiting Juju in the portal. What was what was the biggest thing that stood out to you uh, about him? Yeah, I think uh, if you look at our teams the last few years, um, we've had some really good players uh, from the portal, and I think a big part of it is evaluation. Uh, we all think of recruiting. You look at the four stars, the five stars, the internet, y'all's articles and stuff, but you know, there's also like basketball to be played. So uh, what we try to do a really good job of in the portal, and not me, we got one of the best staffs in college basketball is, you know, we still believe in evaluation. Um, and so I think with Juju, uh, I was really impressed when I started watching him play and uh, watched him play for several days, just game after game after game, and just convinced that um, he could be a really good player in the SEC. And we'll see. You know, it's early season, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But I, I do have confidence uh, in Juju's talent, and I'm starting to trust him more as the season goes on. Uh, but he's a talented player. He played on a really good team. I mean, he played in the Elite Eight as a freshman on an NCAA tournament championship team. So, uh, you know, and he, he's from a neighborhood that's known for toughness. And um, I don't know, he's somebody I believe in. We recruited him and felt like we got the right guy. Yeah, I know you got to look at the film, but just initial reaction of how you felt Musa played and, and the difference he made when he was on the court for those 15 minutes. Yeah, I thought his energy uh, was as expected, one of the hardest playing guys in college basketball. Uh, his ball screen defense made us better. He impacted plays at the rim. Um, you know, it's just really impressive, guys, what he did. You know, to not play for this long um, hasn't been full speed in practice some during this segment. Um, and so, very, very impressive uh, what he did. You, you got to be like an elite athlete and kind of an elite person to to jump up in that kind of game right there and impact the game in a positive way. He did. It's been a long road for him with you know waiting for kind of the eligibility for this year so obviously checking in that first time i noticed that he you know forced the shot clock violation you got kind of pretty animated right afterwards uh with him made sure to give him a high five i guess just watching him going through all that process you say what was it like to kind of see him get back out there and contribute in a big way knowing all that he went through yeah it was, it was awesome for everybody in the organization for me personally uh you know I, I i'm in that office early in the morning late at night i i know what musa does i I know what Musa does with his 24 hours. And so, um, you know, Musa's one of those guys that deserves success. Um, you know, there's a relationship between in basketball, you know, what you put in, what you get out. Doesn't always happen immediately, uh, but if you keep knocking on the door, there's an absolute direct relationship between how hard you work and what the results will be. And Musa's worked extremely hard. So for me personally, uh, it was just, it was great to see him back out there. I know how important this team is to him. And I know how important it is to him, you know, to play college basketball. Chris, you, you mentioned evaluating Juju. I guess, how does what you've gotten from him so far, I mean, 40, played off 40 minutes tonight, 22 points. How does what you've gotten from him so far stack up with what you thought you were getting when, when you evaluated him? Yeah, I have high expectations for all the players that we recruit and coach and work with. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not easy to please. Uh, uh, but I think that's the biggest gift you can give somebody is, uh, hey, I believe in you. But I have really high expectations for you. And so I think Juju could get a lot better. I'm not, you know, uh, breaking a secret code here. I think uh, Juju's just defense has to get better in terms of just intensity and impacting the game. And um, But he played great tonight. I'm not going to take that from him. You know, to have nine assists and one turnover in a, in a, in a big time game, big, big boy game this afternoon in Oxford, it was impressive. Um, I have to go back and watch the film. But I know, I know he, he misses the layup and uh, – Nobody wants to miss a layup. It's just basketball, one out of 500 times type percentage deal. And, um, but I didn't think there was any panic. Uh, I, I loved how he just fought back and went and made the next play. And we call that have an answer uh, in our program. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what he did. So that, that was great to see. That'll be one of the things we show our team tomorrow. Here's the adversity. 
Um, and then here's how he responded. Okay, one more question. Um, Moose's response after Dandridge dunked on him in the, dunked on him in the first half. I don't know if he dunked on him. It's part of basketball. Uh, when you're a fearless, a fearless player like Musa, you're not fearing anything. So those basketball plays happen from time to time. Nothing taken away from Dandridge. Uh, Penny's got two really good bigs and a lot of really good swing players. But I, I don't. From where I was sitting, I don't think he got dunked on. Uh, Musa's one of those guys like. You know he's he's going to, he's going to try to make the play. He's going to be in the fight, and sometimes when you're in the fight, you're going to get punched. You know, like uh, you know, you're going to win a fight. You got to throw punches, and when you throw punches, you open yourself up from time to time to be punched. But I thought Musa played great tonight. Uh, most important, just mentally was with us and helped us win a, a game that uh, we really wanted to win. The Talk of Champions Podcast Network is brought to you in part by the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation. It's getting close to the end of 2023. If you need to make year-end donations for tax purposes, call the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation, and they'll walk you through their philanthropic giving initiatives. Whether it's the Vault Society or Empower, both initiatives give you a tax-deductible way to support the Champions Now campaign for Ole Miss Athletics. Or if you're working on estate planning, call the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation to discuss Forever Ole Miss. For further information, call 662-915-7159. That's 662-915-7159. Or visit GiveToAthletics.com. That's GiveToAthletics.com. It's the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation, a proud sponsor of the Talk of Champions Podcast Network. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Ole Miss beats Memphis 80 to 77. Ole Miss basketball receiving votes this week already under Chris Beard for the top 25, probably getting in starting next week. Ole Miss football recruiting. First, I got to get your take on the recent decommitments. Jeremy Scott decommitted wide receiver, San Francisco yeah. McGee. Yeah, I just did, a, just did a quick piece on this on the site, homespirit.com. You can read about it there. Gave my thoughts. Uh, I don't necessarily know. You know, coaches are not going to comment. On if it was, you know, oh, well, we dropped him or mutual parting of ways. I don't know. Um, I would think that it could be one of or both guys looking to look around, see what else is out there. Maybe Ole Miss is recruiting over them. Ole Miss still wants to land Caleb Odom. Don't know if it's going to happen, but they're going to try. Uh, they feel really good about Stonka Burnside. They want to add him. It's a three three wide receiver class right now. And a pretty damn good one. Narelle White, Raji Dennis, and Marquise Willis, who is in town this weekend for his official. Three good receivers. They want to add a couple. Probably going to also go into the portal, too. They offered Jamari Macklin this week. North Texas guy put up big numbers, set some records there for the mean green. And they're going to continue to monitor the portal and go after more guys. I know you and I have kind of, come, you know, conversed this week about, certain targets that are getting in the portal that Ole Miss has ties to or could look at. I think they're going to want to add a big body and then maybe a shifty slot guy. Um, you know, we talked about Raylan Sharp, the Missouri State guy, uh, a, a, a real, you know, wide receiver nerd dream, great route runner, super shifty, small space quickness, all of that, put up big numbers at Missouri State. Um, and then there's a lot of big body guys that are getting in the portal. So, if Trey Harris decides to take his chances and go pro and try to get into the NFL and continue his career, they're probably going to look to bring in a guy that can be similar in stature, playmaking style, try to get a big guy to be on the outside opposite of, uh, you know, the returners and Aiden Williams, Caden Lee. And then you hopefully bring back Jordan Watkins, Dayton Wade. Um, those two guys have not made decisions yet. But uh, it's certainly possible they could get one or two of them back. Um, yeah, I, I think if you if you made me 
if you pin me down for an answer, I would say maybe one of the decommitments was a, you know, parting of ways mutually or a, you know, hey, recruiting overview type thing. If I had to pick one that wasn't, I would say it was San Francisco McGee. All I heard all offseason, all year, all fall, they loved the kid. They loved his game. Monster numbers at Macomb. He was a freak. He was he would go viral just about every week with some of the catches he would make. That's a big loss, in my opinion. He was a in-person evaluation offer at Juice Fest. So that certainly means that the staff thought that he was good enough to play. But um, without knowing specifics, yeah, I could see it being a, you know, hey, we're recruiting over you, trying to add stuff via the portal or, you know, ensuring somebody like Stonka Burnside and or Caleb Odom, like, hey, don't worry about, you know, how many receivers we got. You just come in and play. Um, but, yeah, the portal is still so, you know, early in its infancy. Like, it's going to continue to be crazy. I mean, I haven't seen an official announcement yet, but there's several people that are well-sourced around the city of Nashville that are saying London Humphreys is getting in the portal. The uh, incredible athlete from Vandy. Um, the uh, the early indication is that Georgia is is recruiting him heavy, um, world class speed. I mean, he broke Jalen Ramsey's Tennessee State record in the two hundred meter. The guy can absolutely move. Um, but he was Vandy's go to guy. If he's leaving and getting in the portal, I mean, I know it's Vanderbilt, but you think you're the number one guy? You put up big numbers this year. You're going to continue to be the number one guy. Just buy your time and go pro. New age, NIL, portal, guys are looking to go elsewhere, get to a bigger program, bigger stage. So the portal is going to continue to be crazy. Big names are going to continue to get in, and uh, Ole Miss is going to absolutely be monitoring that and looking to uh, add more big names to this portal class that is uh, yet to begin. Western Kentucky cornerback Upton Stout is one I've been told to keep an eye on. Um, other visitors this weekend include a tackle from Southern Miss. We expect a commitment from him eventually, as well as a JUCO offensive tackle. Some things are happening. We'll have some interviews from those visits this weekend on the Ole Miss Spirit, OldMissSpirit.com, and Food of on 3. Check that out. Subscribe, rate, review, talk of champions and iTunes. And when you do, leave a five-star review. It doesn't matter what you say as long as it's five stars. Best of luck in Chattanooga, my friend. We'll talk again. All right. I'm going to try to find an umbrella. <laughs>